it seems the jobs here are drying up, so it's time to go. That's the entire point of a starship, right? As you drift into the departure lane, you hear a few of the crew speculating about their paychecks once you make landfall. The news reports have declared the world you're headed to is a battle zone. One of the mining guilds has offered you a decent paycheck to see off some corporate mercenaries and it seems like as good a job as any. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Five Parsecs from Home. We are doing the introductory campaign to be followed by the normal campaign. We are on mission number four. Um, mission number three kind of went okay. It was just that the post battle screwed me up with Misha out for six turns due to injury. Six turns, man. <sighs> Uh, also gaining two rivals. Right, let's get back to turn, sorry, mission four. Uh, as with the other missions in this campaign, every step we're getting more stuff to do. As we uh, follow the campaign, we're getting more steps, more steps. It's like a, a gentle intro to the campaign. So in mission four, we actually have some new before battle steps to do, things that I haven't done before. So Decide whether to travel, starship travel event, new world arrival. Um, now, the thing is that when I created my crew, I actually rolled up uh, a planet. Um, and then when I started the campaign, I noted that the planet was already set. So the planet that I created during the crew creation is where I'm now going. Now, the campaign turn actually starts with fleeing invasions. We don't have to worry about that. We then go to decide whether to travel. Every campaign turn, you make a decision. You have to make a decision whether you're going to stay on the same planet or whether you're going to travel to a new planet. So in this case, we are being forced. <laughs> the campaign is basically telling us, you are changing planets. So we are changing planets. Normally, it would cost five credits. We don't have... Well, we don't have hardly any money. We've only got eight credits, thanks to all the bloody injuries. Um, but luckily, we don't have to pay that this turn in this introductory campaign. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, you can re-roll new planets, takes extra turns, whatever. Okay, so um, that's all done. I don't think I have to roll for the rivals and patrons just yet. So um, we are going to travel. We are not paying the cost this turn, luckily. We now have to make a roll on the Starship Travel Events table. So this is a percentage dice table. We're going to roll and see what happens. So we are going to roll black first and see what happens during our travel. We get a 63. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Accident. A crew member gets injured while doing a routine maintenance task. They must rest up for one campaign turn to recover from the injury, and one item they carry is damaged. What the hell? The game hasn't even started yet, and I'm already screwed. Oh, that's nuts. Um, shit. Oh, uh, no. All right, um... Oh, but if they're injured, they can't do crew tasks. I think they'll get they'll get healed in the upkeep phase. I think because they lose one turn of sick bay time in the in the in the uh, upkeep phase, but they can't do a task. So basically, I'm losing one guy from doing tasks. Oh, that sucks, man. And one item that they carry is damaged. Oh man, that's grand. Right, what's crap? Uh, all right, so I'm going to say Krista. So I'm going to say that Krista gets, gets injured during a maintenance check and her handgun gets damaged. So write this down on the crew sheet. Her handgun is damaged. 
Oh man. Which also means that she is going to be unavailable for crew tasks. Damn it. <sighs> okay, so Starship travel uh, sucks. Okay. What do we do now? New world arrival steps. Ah, excellent. So, we actually rolled up a new planet when we created the crew. Um, so we'll be using that as our upcoming planet here. Maud 6 was the name I rolled up. Right, so, new world arrival steps. Are we doing the whole thing, is it? Yeah, we're doing the whole thing. Right, so first, check for rivals. Any rivals you have... Roll D6 on a 5 plus, they opt to follow you, otherwise they remain behind. Okay, so we have two rivals on our previous planet. We've got the cultists and the primitives. So on a 5 plus, they follow us. So the cultists... The primitives... Okay, the primitives stay behind, but the cultists follow. This really isn't good. So now on this new planet, I have three patrons, which I rolled up during crew creation. And I now have three rivals. Oh my God. The enforcers and the corporate security I rolled up during crew creation and the cultists are following me from the previous planet. Oh, for God's sake. Right, rivals are screwing me. <laughs> Not having very good luck with this game. Okay. Dismiss patrons. All patrons remain behind unless they're persistent. Well, I didn't have any patrons on the last planet. The patrons that I rolled up in crew creation, I'm starting on this planet. Um, so no need to worry about that. Check for licensing. Right, I did that and I didn't need a license. Uh, next, world traits. Okay, I rolled this and I got... I got frozen as the world trait. I think frozen was up here. Frozen was up here. And basically, Frozen is... It's an ice planet. So the special rules are that any character making a dash may opt to slide. They move D6 in a straight line and must move full distance. If they collide with anything, they and any character they collide with are knocked one inch in a random direction and become stunned. Now, is that one inch in addition to their dash move, or is it replacing their dash move? I would assume that it's in addition to their dash move. Because it doesn't say, it doesn't think, the thing is it doesn't say they move an extra D6 in a straight line. Um, but it seems a bit strange that if you're gonna make a dash, you're only moving D6 inches, which could be like one inch or two inches. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna assume that it is an extra D6 inches in a straight line. Now, this could be quite useful um, for moving, for example, from cover to cover. If I haven't quite got enough move or speed or movement distance, I can actually slide to get a little bit of extra move to, to get into cover. So it could be quite useful, but the enemy could use this as well. <sighs> <sighs> so that's the new world. <laughs> the new world, Maud 6. Right, so that's the traveling done, and that's the new world done. What do we do now? Well, now we have to carry out the following steps of the world sequence. Now, we don't, again, we don't have to do everything at the moment, but we do have to upkeep and ship repairs, which is the first one. Now, this is the one I've kind of been dreading, but I have been preparing for. Uh, each campaign turn, you've got to pay upkeep for your crew. Upkeep costs one, to, one credit if you have four to six crew. Well... I have seven crew, but it does say that I don't have to count crew members in sick bay. So I have one member in, I have two members in sick bay actually. So I've only got five counting towards this. So that's going to cost me one credit. So I'm now down to seven. Ship debt. Um, you can make payments on your ship if you owe money. Having done so, if you still owe money, the amount is now increased by one credit. The thing is, I don't have a lot of money. But here's the thing, if you owe 31 or more, it's two credits per turn instead of one credit. Now I've 
I've actually been paying off a little bit of this every sort of turn, and I've got it down to 30, which means the debt will be, in, or the interest on the debt will only be one credit per turn. But if I don't pay anything this turn, it will go up to 31, and then next turn I'm going to be screwed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay one credit to bring this down to 29. The interest will then bring it back up to 30. So I'm still safe. I still owe a load of money. I really need to earn more credits. I haven't been getting much credits at all. But I, I need to bring this down. This is going to be a problem later on. So that is done. What's next? Uh, ship repairs, no need. Medical care. Okay, if you have crew in sick bay, you can pay four credits to remove one turn. No. Okay, um, characters in sick bay can mark off one campaign turn. Now, I have two two crew members in sickbay. I have Hero, who has two turns left, and I have Misha, who has six turns. So Misha will just knock off one. That's not an issue in terms of that. We can do that fairly simply. So she's now got five more turns, but she's out for this game. Hero has two more turns left. However, we do have a med patch. Now, I've put a note here that I'm going to use it on Hero this turn. Now, what the med patch does, let me just quickly turn to the page. We have the bookmark. Okay, so what the med patch does, a character recovering from an injury may subtract one campaign turn. If this reduces the time to zero, they may act normally this campaign turn. Now, they may act normally this campaign turn. Do they do tasks or not? Normally, when a character does their last turn in the sick bay, they can join the crew for battle but cannot perform a task. But with a med patch, it says they can act normally this campaign turn. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to assume that normal means they can join the battle but they can't do a task. That's what I'm going to assume. So... For hero, we take away one turn as per normal, as per the rules, and we're going to use the med patch to bring it down to zero. So hero can now join the crew. The med patch is used, but hero is available for this battle. Yeah, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, I've got six guys for this battle. Uh, Misha is in sick base still for another five turns. Uh, Krista, that's a point, she had that accident, didn't she? So Krista, because of that accident, has to spend one, one turn in sick bay. But with the upkeep, she loses that. So basically, she's back in the fight, but she can't do a crew task. Which again is a problem. So these two, sorry, can't see. These two guys. She's in sick bay for five more turns, can't do shit. These two guys are, are recovered, but they can't do crew tasks. So that leaves me with four crew members that can do crew tasks. This is not good. Now, crew tasks is the next thing we need to do, and I, I'm limited in what I can choose. I can't do all of them. I can only choose train, trade, recruit, explore, or repair kit. Now, can my engineer repair kit? No, because she's in sick bay. She can't do a task. Damn it. All right. So forget the repair kit thing. I mean, others can do it, but they've got to roll a six. Mm, no, nah, won't bother with that. So we are going to have Khan. I think Khan is going to train. Uh, Crichton is going to... Let's have a think. I think Crichton and... I think Crichton, Crichton and Zorgi are going to trade. And Dex is going to explore. So train, trade, explore. Okay, let's do Khan first. 
right? So for training, they basically earn one XP and they can increase a stat if they have enough. Well, he doesn't have enough, but he earns one XP, so he now has four XP. So that's Khan done. We've got these two guys and this guy left. Right. Uh, let's do let's do the trading next. We've got two guys training trading. We've got Crichton and we've got Zorgi. What are they going to find? We are going to do uh, black first. We're going to do Crichton first. We get 77. 77. A chance to unload some stuff. A revolutionary will buy any weapon for two credits each, provided they are not damaged. Um, I don't have a lot of... I don't have a lot of stuff, but I think I will, because I need credits. I think I'm going to sell the handgun, Hero's handgun, and I think I'm going to sell, I think I'm going to sell Khan's scrap pistol. So that's going to be four credits. That brings us up to ten. All right. Um, what else, what else, what else? Okay, so now it is Zorgi. So we roll for Zorgi, black first. We get 86. 86, gently used. Roll once on the gear subsection of the loot table. The item is damaged and needs repair. All right, so page 132, gear. 132... 132 gear, okay. This is going to be damaged, so it needs to be repaired. Uh, black first. We get 51. 51 is protective item. Protective item is here. Black first. Zero 02. Battle dress. Okay, whatever. Whatever the heck that is. Dress. We've got two girls. I don't think that's what it means. <laughs> I don't think it means a dress. <laughs> All right, so we get a battle dress. Uh, let's have a quick look. Let's have a quick look. See what that is. Where's the equipment? Where's the protective stuff? Where's the protective stuff? Battle dress. Armor. The character counts as plus one reactions and receives a saving throw of five plus. <gasps> Oh, yes. Oh, yes, something positive. <gasps> something good's happened. <gasps> okay, sweet. Battle dress. I've got to figure out who's going to get that. Okay, nice, nice, nice. That was really nice. And we have... We have... So that was Zorgi. Well done, Zorgi, mate. Sorry, oops. Knocked the camera. All right, who do we have left? We have Dex. Dex left. He's going to explore... So we're going to be rolling on the explore table. Black first. We get 41, 41. Someone wants a package delivered. When you travel to a new world, if this crew member is still in the crew, earn three credits and roll D6. On a one to two, you've acquired a rival and received plus one story point. You know that's going to bloody happen, didn't you? Look, it's a one or two. It's Okay, well, at least I get three credits out of it. But this is when I travel to a new world. Not this world. This is going to be on the next world. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> all right. Uh, so that's all the crew tasks done because I only had four guys available. What's next? Next is to assign equipment. Well, I do have the battle dress to assign. Um, bam, bam, bam. And there's also a shock attachment that I got last game, last... Uh, last mission. So, I will assign the battle dress and the shock attachment. I will sort everything out in terms of what I need to do for the battle. Uh, the battle, there are some roles that I need to do. Actually, should we do those now? Yeah, let's do those now. So, for the... for this upcoming battle... There are no deployment conditions. Now, the deployment conditions kind of screwed me last time. 
but this time, uh, no deployment conditions, but we have to roll if a notable site is found. Do not roll for unique individuals. You will roll to seize the initiative at the minus one. Okay, seize the initiative I will actually do when I start the battle. Mission objective is secure. Okay, so it's another objective that I need to do. Good. Enemies should all be set up. Yeah, these guys are tactical. So again, we're using another AI. We've got another objective. So we're learning. We're learning all these different things, which is wonderful. But what I can do now before we start the battle is actually roll for this notable site. So we can do that now. That is page 89. Page 89. Where are you? Here we go. Notable sites. This is percentage, so black first. Zero two again. Hmm. Oh, nothing special. Okay. <laughs> um, right, let's get on with the game. So this will be mission four for Khan's Misfits. Coming up in a couple of seconds. Don't go away. Hi guys, welcome to another game of Five Parsecs from Home. This is mission number four and we are we're in for a tough fight this time. We're up against mercenaries who have a higher speed. They've all got a plus one to their combat and they've all got a toughness of four, which uh, even though there's only five of them, uh, it's going to be a tough match. They're also equipped with better weapons. Um, the leader has a machine pistol and blade. The specialist has a rattle gun, which is terrifying. It's three shots. Uh, and the rest all have military rifles, which are, which are what I'm kind of armed with, most of my guys. Um, so this is going to be a tough fight. Um, they're also the tactical AI. Um, so again, this is a little bit more of a challenge, the tactical AI. Is a <laughs> it's not as stupid or it's not as dumb or it's not as emotional or instinctive as some of the other AIs. They're a lot more methodical, um, a lot more careful, uh, <laughs> a lot more military. So this is going to be a tougher fight. Um, I'm hoping that the objective is going to help me. For the objective for this game, we have secure. Again, something new. So for secure, I have to end two consecutive rounds with a crew member within two inches of the table center. Uh, a crew member with an enemy within six inches doesn't count. Once that's achieved, we win. We can then check and see whether the enemy retreats. Now, on this board, um, as you, as you uh, may have seen in the pre-game, I've traveled to a new planet and the planet had the trait frozen so hence the uh, the new board the ice board um, what I've done with the setup is I've put these rocks and crates in the center of the board so what I'm gonna say is because technically two inches from the center is kind of on these rocks so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that a crew member has to be in contact with this group of rocks for it to count as being within you know, the two inches for the secure. Um, but again, any, any enemy within six inches of them is going to negate their ability to fulfill the objective. So, but like I say, hopefully I can maybe win the objective <laughs> before, before these uh, mercenaries whip my ass. Uh, Misha is out for six turns, well, five turns now, but Hero's back. I've given Hero um, Misha's hunting rifle. So I've just swapped their guns because the, the hunting rifle that Misha had had a stabilizer which negates the heavy penalty. Crichton, as usual, has his shell gun, very nice gun. Dex has his infantry laser, the rest of them have military rifles. Uh, for the opposition, we have the leader here with his um, casual hat. I don't know what the military call those. I used to know, I can't remember. Um, the other guys have the helmets. So we've got three 
basic mercenaries here armed with military rifles. He has a machine pistol and blade, and the specialist here has a rattle gun, which I'm a little bit worried about. And like I mentioned earlier, the objective is for a crew member to be in contact with these rocks for two consecutive turns to win the objective. Now, just because I win the objective doesn't mean the game's over. We still have to get these guys to either run away or die. <laughs> uh, in the, uh, the pre-game, I also rolled up some battle dress, a rather nice piece of armor that we found. I think Zorgi found it. Um, but I think in the pre-game I forgot that it was damaged, so I can't actually use it this, uh, this mission. I have to try and repair it uh, next mission, or in the next turn, before I can get to use that battle dress. And that battle dress is awesome. Right, so this mission, we are going to roll to seize the initiative. So to do that, we have to roll 2d6. We add the highest savvy. Uh, but for this mission, I do have a minus one. The mission to tells me that I have a minus one to this roll. So my highest savvy is Crichton, which is plus two. So with the minus one, I get a plus one in total. Now what I need to do is roll 2d6 and I've got to get a 10 plus. So with the plus one, I just need to roll a nine plus. And then I can basically, um, before the first round, I can take a normal move or fire with every character but shots will only hit on an actual six. So let's see, I need to roll a nine plus on 2d6. We rolled a five, so no, I didn't seize the initiative. Turns will start as normal. And that will entail rolling the activation dice. Now I've had mixed fortunes with this in the past, as you've seen on the other videos. If you haven't seen the other videos, why not? Go back and watch them after this. And while you're doing that, make sure to like every video and subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost anything, but it does me a huge, huge favor. Thank you very much in advance. So we are going to roll activations. Now we are looking at their reaction stats. Uh, my crew, okay, Dex, who is over there, he has a reaction of three. Crichton up here has a reaction of two. Misha is sick. Uh, Krista, she has a reaction of two. Um, when I created Krista, I rolled on the tables just for theme, thematic purposes. But in the rules updates, it says that you can basically roll up a new character using the tables, but you don't get any credits. So um, I rolled her up her background, her motivation, and her career, her previous career, but I didn't apply the modifiers or the effects. Now I have, <laughs> um, well, she got plus one to her reactions, but she, <laughs> she also provided us with another rival. Luckily, they're back on the old planet. Uh, she also got an extra XP, so that's, that's uh, oh no, sorry, savvy, not XP. Um, so yes, uh, Chris, so reaction three, two, two, one, uh, one, and Zorgi, one. Yeah, so three of my guys have reactions of one, two, have two, and one has three. So when we roll the activation dice, we basically just assign to who has those reactions. So I have six guys. I'm rolling six dice, let's see, and let's -a go! Uh, okay, well, 50-50. We got three slow. Sorry, that should have been a four. No, actually, we got, th we got three slow, and we've got... Okay, so the three can go only to Dex. He's the only one that can use the three. And then we have two ones that... These can be given to anybody. So what I'm going to do, these are my fast activations. I'm going to give the three to Dex because he's the only one who can use a three. I'm going to give a one to Crichton. And I'm going to give the other one to... I'll give it, I'll give it to Krista anyway. And I think I'll put it on snap, snapshot, snapfire. 
because then she can just activate in the slow phase anyway. And then the other guys are going to be acting in the slow phase, and hopefully they can react to what the enemy is going to do. Five has a six, and Zorki has a six. Okay, uh, activations. Dark okay, so uh, fast phase. My troops in the fast phase go first, then the enemy, then the slow phase, and then the end phase. So what am I going to do first? I've got three guys on the fast phase, which is Crichton, Dex, and Misha. I think Misha, I'm going to put her on Snapfire. So we'll put a little token. What's going to show up the best? I think, let's use blue. All right, so she's going to go on Snapfire, just in case anybody comes around here. Um, Snapfire is like Overwatch. You can interrupt an enemy's movement to shoot them, um, but if no, if that doesn't happen, basically she can activate in the slow phase anyway. So she's on Snapfire. These two are slow. Zorgi's slow. We've got Krypton and Dex. Now with Dex. I'm going to make a dash towards the rocks, see if I can't start the countdown already. Now he's a base speed of 5, so dashing gives him a plus 2, so he can move 7. Now on this planet we have, it's frozen, we have that special rule where he can slide an extra d6 inches. The trouble with that is if I roll high, he's going to bounce off the rocks and, and slide backwards, which wouldn't be what I need to do. So I need to move him 7 inches, which will bring him in contact with the rock and hopefully out of sight of any enemies. So that is Dex there. Now Krypton is going to take a shot. Oh, you can't see. Oh, that bloody thing's in the way. Damn it! <laughs> I, I deployed him here so that he could take a shot at the rattle gun, but the trouble is that this is in the way. I didn't notice that. Oh, damn it. Now, um, okay, so here's a question. The shell gun that Crichton has is a grenade launcher. Does it fire indirect? Can I lob a grenade over this to hit this guy? Because that's... I mean, that's a, a tactical use of a grenade launcher, is to actually use it for indirect fire, to fire over obstacles. Because um, I don't think it actually says in the rules whether there's any such thing as indirect fire. Let me, let me double check, one second. Okay, yeah, I, I can't find anything actually in the rules. I had a quick look, maybe I'm missing something, but... Um, this may be a question I'll ask in the uh, Facebook group. Um, can the grenade launcher, the shell gun, actually fire indirectly? Because the thing is, even if I move him, this, this thing here, which I should have put here, uh, this thing's actually blocking my line of sight, but I know he's there. What to do? Should I just say that there is no shot or... Another thing that I can do is that, again, in the update, um, you can actually fire an area weapon at a point at a point instead of a target. So, like for example, I could shoot the, sh the shell gun like instead of aiming at a, at a person and getting those two hits and then one hit for everybody within two inches. What I could do is I could shoot here instead. Like for example, if this guy is completely around the corner, I could shoot here don't get, or I lose those two shots, but I will get that one extra hit for him being within two inches. Maybe for indirect fire, that's what we have to do. Maybe for indirect fire, we don't get those two shots on the target like normal. We'll just get like the blast effect, that hit. I think, again, I, there's nothing, I can't find anything in the rules. So what I'll do is I will make, I will make a, temporary decision now that the shell gun can fire indirect but it won't get those two shots at the target it will only get the blast effect which is the one sh one hit 
that we normally give to those within two inches. So I think that's what I'll do. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, obviously, I can't come back and replay the game, but this is I think this is a fair way of doing it because, like I say, shell guns or grenade launchers, that is kind of what they're designed for. Um, so what I'll do with Crichton is I'll move him because you won't be able to fire from here. He's too close to this. I'll move him up to here so that he's got a very, good, very nice cover. Now, he would normally have line of sight, but like I say, this thing is blocking his way. So what I'll do is I'll shoot the shell gun, but I'll just apply that blast effect, not the actual direct two hits or two shots. I'll just get the blast effect, which is one hit. So he's in range, the shell gun has a range of 30, so he's well within range. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Basically, he loses the two shots, he just gets the blast effect. So it'll be one one roll to hit. Uh, again, would, would cover count with a blast? Because if I'm going to shoot here, he'll be out in the open for the blast. So, and again, in the update, it said about hard cover. Well, if I, if I put the blast, set the blast here, he's not going to get any cover at all. So that would count as being open within range. So five plus. Uh, he moved, so it's a six plus, but he has a combat of plus one. So five plus, five plus to hit. We miss. After, <laughs> after all that, uh, we miss. Okay, so Crichton is gone and uh, Krista is on Snapfire. So now it is the enemy turn. Now we, with the enemy AI, we have to activate closest to the crew first. So closest to my guys first. So uh, the specialist is the closest to my guys. Now again, he would have had a clear shot at Crichton. But again, that's blocking his line of sight. The rattle gun is just like a, a machine gun, so he can't do that. But he can move and shoot, but he would get the heavy penalty. Um, but let's have a look at what the AI says. Enemy in sight, no. Advance at least half speed, always retaining cover where possible, will cross open ground at full speed. Well, he will move to get line of sight and then shoot. So he will move, what's the move of these guys? These guys have got a speed of, wow, the leader is a move of six, the others are a move of five. Well, okay, so he can move up to five inches. So what he'll do is he'll move to here and he will take a shot. He will take a shot at Crichton. Now Crichton is in cover. The range of a rattle gun is 24. So again, he's within range. But this is what's frightening. The rattle gun shoots three shots. So he's uh, cover target within range is a six plus. He gets a minus one from the heavy, but he has a combat of plus one. So he needs sixes to hit. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> oh, nuts. All right, so with Crichton, he has a saving throw. Okay, the rules basically say that you roll for damage first, and if they're wounded, you then do the saving throw. Um, but in the update, there are these um, not final uh, rules or updates where basically they say that you do the armor save first because uh, if, you, if your armor works, you don't get stunned. So what we'll do is we will make the wound roll first, We'll then do the armor save, and if the armor save, actually no, it doesn't make sense, does it? We'll do the armor save first because it doesn't end up being standard according to the update, the sort of temporary rules. So he has a six plus armor save. Nope. So now we roll to wound. So his toughness is four. The rattle gun doesn't have any modifiers, so on a Four plus. Crichton. Shit. Crichton's down. Crichton's down. Shit. Oh, nuts. Uh, seriously, the dice hate me. Okay, Crichton is down. I've put a. 
<laughs> I've put a pool of blood here. I know it's not bloody supposed to be the. Uh... <laughs> It's a robot, it's supposed to be oil, but I didn't do any oil spills. Um, oh damn, Crichton's down, that's not good. Shit. Um, oh, nuts. Alright, so that's that's this guy activated. I knew that rail gun was going to be a problem. Alright, the other guys, uh, next we have to activate these guys. Uh, what's their move? Their move is five. Uh, enemy in sight, no. Advance at least half speed, always retaining cover where possible. We'll cross open ground at full speed. Now, where are they going to go? I think. Um, I think they're going to come around here. Because they wouldn't know that she's on snap fire, but they do know that this is the, this is the objective. So they'll be they're looking to come around here and possibly cut it off that way. So they're going to run this way here. Keeping in cover, so five, six, seven, move. Gets to about, gets to about there. The thing is, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to see her as he come around with his normal move. Only with his dash would he see her. And Misha has a shot. So she's going to snap fire. She's going to take a shot at this guy. Now he is partially blocked by the corner here. So he will count as being in cover. So she will take a shot. Uh, okay, she's using a military rifle, range of 24. So yes, within range. He's in cover. Uh, so it's a 6 plus normally. She doesn't have a combat modifier, so it's just a 6 plus. Okay, 6 plus to hit. No other modifiers, is there? No, 6 plus. Of course, it doesn't roll 6s for me. <laughs> uh, so she misses, snap fire's gone. Okay, this guy will do the same thing, or will he? Because he heard, no. Because he heard the shooting from there, he's going to take a different path. He's going to try and come up. The ladder and come up into here so he's going to move around and he can get five okay he doesn't have enough movement to go up so he'll basically come around to here and he'll be going up up here after on the next turn right and then we've got these guys we've got the grunt and we've got the leader now the leader has a speed of six and he's only got short range weapons. He's got a blade and a machine pistol. The machine pistol has a range of eight. Two shots. Mm. <clears throat> now, the thing is, they can't see decks, so they're not gonna be able to shoot anybody from here. So, can they see the enemy? No. Advance at least half speed, always retaining cover where possible. Okay, so they're gonna, I think they're gonna try and take cover inside this building here. So this guy has a move of six, so he can run eight. Now, the buildings have a, a, a low edge and a high edge, so going over the low edge is not a problem. So eight inches will bring... Sorry, you're not going to be able to see these guys when they're in the building, are you? So he will run to there. Oops. I, mean, I can take the roofs off, I suppose. Uh, this guy will do the same thing, but he will come through this way. So he has a move of seven, so he can get inside the building there let's quickly take the roof off so you guys can see okay so i've just taken i've taken the roof off for the time being until somebody actually goes up onto this roof i've left the roof off so you can see and i can see the guys who are inside so that is the enemy turn finish he was shot at but missed and he dashed this guy dashed he'll be going up onto the roof next turn. These guys run into the building and this guy took out Crichton. Son of a bitch. All right, now it is the slow phase. So Crichton is down, Dex is gone, Krista's gone. So we've got Hero, Khan and Zorgi. Now, I think Hero is gonna take a shot 
I've got, to, I've got to get rid of this guy. This guy is too nasty. So Hero is going to move four inches. So he's going to move to this corner here. And he's going to take a shot at this guy. Now, normally higher terrain would negate cover, but this guy's well behind cover. So cover rules still apply. So in range, but in cover, is a six plus. Uh, the heavy modifier doesn't count because he has a stabilizer. So it's normally a six plus. He has a plus one combat, so that makes it a five plus to hit. We hit. Oh, another thing: uh, sixes aren't natural, aren't automatic hits. Um, so he hits. Uh, the mercenary has a toughness of four. But this hunting rifle has a damage of one, so I get a plus one to the roll. So instead of needing a four plus, I need a three plus to wound him. Okay, three plus. Oh, yes. Down he goes. That'll teach you. Git. And Hero also gets the XP for the first. Kill. Nice. Okay, an eye for an eye. Both our special weapons, special weapon members of both out. Krypton with his shell guns down and the guy with the rail gun down. Okay, so we have Khan and Zorgi left. Now they have no they have no line of sight anywhere. Now what's Zorgi gonna do? Can he pick up the gun? Could Zorgi go up and pick up the shell gun? Well, I think, there's, I think there's rules about not being able to pick up enemy weapons, but could you pick up the weapon of a crew member? Would it be a free action, or would it count as their combat action? Uh, I, had a, I had a quick look in the rules, I couldn't find anything. At a quick glance, again, I might be missing something up. Have to ask this question on Facebook afterwards. Um, what I'm going to do for this game is I'm going to say that I can pick up, if I go to the figure in question, I can pick up the weapon but it would count as the combat action to pick it up and load it and everything else. I think that's maybe a fair way of doing it. I don't know, I'll have to check and see because the thing is that shell gun's too good not to use. <laughs> so um, I think Zorg is going to try and run up to Crichton. Um, so Zorgi has a move of four, I think. Yeah, he has a speed of four, so he can run six. So he would get up halfway up the stairs. Now, is the model going to balance? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this dice just to <laughs> just to help him keep balance as he's as he's running up the stairs. <laughs> I'll have to get another dice for the activation. <laughs> All right, so that's Zorgi done. Uh, Khan, what should I bring him there? Again, that guy can come and shoot him. So I'm just going to leave him here. For, or should I bring him down? Yeah, I think I'm just going to bring him down. So he can run six. So it's going to take five. No, but then he'd be out in the open, wouldn't he? Screw that. Um, or he could come here to go up the ladder next turn. Six, okay, he can get to the ladder in three, and then three to go up. Okay, so he'll just put this back where it was. He'll just go up the ladder. Okay, he won't shoot. Uh, I think that is everybody. So, end of turn. There's nobody within six inches, so he has one turn next to the objective. So I've got to keep the I've got to keep the enemy outside of six inches of him next turn. That's what I have to do. Um, so that's the objective done. Uh, morale. Uh, yeah, Crichton's Crichton's down. I'll leave him there. Okay, so the enemy lost one casualty. Their panic range is one to two. 
So they had one casualty, so on a one to two, somebody runs away. See, this is what I mean. There's a divine, there is something divine at work here. I never roll these for myself, very, very rarely, but the enemy seems to roll loads. Damn it, they don't run away. However, I will remove the model so I can remember casualties. Leave the blood bear, always leave the blood bear. All right, uh, that is the end of the first turn. Second turn, two, four, six activations. I've got to make sure that, that the uh, enemy stays away from decks. So activations, that's not too bad. Slow, that's going to be slow. Okay, so decks. Okay, so I've got two slow. I've got a couple of ones, a two, and a three. Hmm, well, a three has to go to Dex. I might as well use it, even if Dex ain't going to do anything. I think I'm just going to put him on snap fire, just in case anybody tries creeping up on him. Maybe move, or maybe just move him closer into the uh, into the rocks to provide better cover, and say that he's just laying down. Okay, we got a two. Now the two can be used by Crichton, <laughs> who's out, Misha, who's sick, or Krista. I guess it has to be Krista. <laughs> so Krista has the two. I've got two ones. Now, who do I want to activate fast? I think I'm going to activate Zorgi. And I haven't got any shots, have I? I don't have any shots. Actually, why did I roll six dice? Quick turns down. <clears throat> Quick turns down, I should have only rolled five dice. That was a bit of a boo-boo. Okay, I'll lose the other fast. I'll just have two slow. This is my penalty. So my penalty for forgetting. So we have the two up on the tower at slow. We've got really good cover. I don't even know if anyone is going to see them. All right, so we have fast phase. Uh, what are we going to do? Okay, Zorgi is going to run up here. He can run six. He can get to Krypton and grab the weapon. So Zorgi now has the shell gun. But he's going to use his action to, um, to equip it. I think, I, again, I can't see anything in the rules about um, taking your other cruise weapon, your down cruise weapon. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically say that he's taking the weapon. Let's keep him cover as much as possible. Uh, so he's got the shell gun now. Uh, who else have we got? Okay, Dex. I think he wants to stay where he is. Now I can either move him closer into the cover or snap. I think I'll just move him closer into the cover. So he's just going to go there and lay down. Yeah, he's going to lay down so basically nobody can shoot him from this direction. Okay, and then we have Krista. Now Krista has a shot. Uh, oh, I didn't do. With Snapfire, would you still get the aim? I don't think you would. I think for Snapfire, I don't think you'd get the uh, aim bonus. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. So she'll shoot at this guy, she'll aim. So normally it would be a six plus to hit, but because she's aiming, she can re-roll ones. So military rifle, yeah, no combat modifier. So it's a six plus, it's so now a five plus. So she needs a five plus to hit. Typical. So she shoots and misses. Uh, do do That's all of my fast guys. Okay, now it's the enemy's turn. They have to get close to Dex to negate his ability. Because if he if he's if he's there unopposed next this turn, at the end of this turn, he basically wins the objective. And the thing is, the leader. Going to be an open target if he runs out there, but he has to 
He's the only one who's got a chance of getting within six inches. Uh, I mean, if you can get behind these, would that still count as being within six inches? Yeah. Okay, so he's going to... What's his move? His move is six. All right, so he's going to move behind the crates here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, he, enemy in sight, no, so move here. So can he see anybody? He can't see those two. Uh, can he see Zorgi? No. Can't see Zex? No. Okay, so he can't see anybody. He's just going to stay there. All right, but now he's within six inches of Dex, so we've got to get rid of this guy. Next closest is this guy. He is going to move up. Enemy, oh, sorry, uh, enemy in sight, yes. Within range, yes. If they have a clear shot or in cover, they will remain in place and aim. So no. And then within 12 inches, no. So what they're going to do, this guy is going to basically move up to here to cover. And again, I don't know whether you can see this guy on the, on the camera. But he's going to take a shot at Krista. So Krista is in cover. Uh, so that's the 6 plus. But these guys all have a combat of plus one. So he needs a five plus to hit Krista. I knew it, I bloody knew it. I bloody, bloody knew it. Ah, oh, the dice, oh. So he hits. Krista has a toughness of three. So a three plus. Ah, uh, okay. Krista's down. Damn it. Uh, who's next? Next is this guy. Now he has a move of five, so he can run seven because he can't see anybody. So can he? No, he can't get out there. So what he will do is... Gotta stay in cover. So he'll run to the corner here. Now, this is going to... Okay, I'll, I'll do it so he's out. So he's not in line of sight for these guys, but Zorgi may be next turn, but I've got to try and get close to this guy. Um, who's left? This guy's left. So he will go up the stairs, which counts as four inches. Uh, does he have line of sight? No. No line of sight, so four. Uh, five, six, seven, so he can run to there. I can now put the roof back on top of the building. Yeah, on there. Right. Uh, so that's the enemy done. This isn't good. All right, so all I have left are these two now. Hero can get a shot there, Khan is going to have to move to get a shot, but he can also get a shot. Um, yeah, so Khan will move to here, so that he gets cover. So Khan will shoot at the leader, in range, but in cover. So he needs a 6 plus to hit, uh, no modifiers, so he just needs a 6 plus to hit. Hero. Hero is going to take a shot. He's aiming. Ah, oh dear. So he needs a six plus. Aiming allows him to re-roll. Actually, did I? I think I may have done this. I may have, may have done it wrong, wrong for Krista. I think I gave her a plus one instead of re-roll ones. But aiming allows you to re-roll ones. So Hero has a combat of plus one. So six plus becomes a five plus, and he can re-roll ones. Yay! Well, the dice are good for Hero, so he hits. Um, the hunting rifle has a damage of plus one, so the leader has a toughness of four. So it becomes three. I need a three plus. Three plus. Ooh, yeah! Leader goes down. 
something's gone wrong. Well, Hero's carrying the game. <laughs> Everyone else is doing shit, but Hero's like, did you miss me? Did you miss me? All right, so I think this means we win the objective because nobody's within six inches of Dex anymore. No, he's outside. Maybe I should have moved him up a little bit closer, but I think he had the movement. Okay, um, so that is everybody's activation. So now it is the end turn. So we have a guy in contact with the target there for two consecutive turns. So we win the objective. Uh, okay, we can drive them off. Okay, there's a chance now that these guys will actually leave the battlefield. But let's do the uh, morale first, I think. So we have a casualty, but we don't have to check for morale. They have a casualty, so they're checking for morale. They are panicking on a one or two. Nope, they don't panic. However, now we have to check whether they actually um, run away because if we meet the objective win conditions, the enemy may give up. At the end of the current turn and every subsequent turn roll, 2d6 for cautious, defensive or tactical, 1d6 for aggressive. Rampaging or beast will never end, will never run away. Okay, so I've got to roll two dice because they're, they're tactical. If either of these comes up with a one, the enemy runs away and we hold the field. Now. I need a one, I roll a lot of ones. Well, what's the betting I roll double six? Because I need ones, what's the betting I roll a double six or a five and a six? I just need a one. Dice gods, you hate me, give me ones now. Son of a... I knew it. What's the betting the next time I'm rolling dice I roll ones? I betcha, I betcha. Right, so they don't run away. But we have achieved the objective. It's something, I suppose, but it's, it's a costly, it's a costly win because I'm down two guys. Oof, terrible. All right, so no need for this dice anymore. We have achieved the objective. We can actually run away now. No, but I want to hold the field because I get extra loot rolls and stuff. Okay, uh, I've got to try and get these guys to run away. All right, so we now only have four. Four? Yeah, we've only got four people now. So money rolling four activation dice. Let's go. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, well, there's one slow. And we got a two and a couple of ones. Now, I'm kind of wanting... I know it's a bad idea, but I'm kind of wanting to charge with <laughs> decks. Uh, but the thing is, you can't dash into brawling, so he won't be able to reach. He's only got a move of five. So, what should I do? The two has to go to Dex because the only other guys with a reaction of two is Crichton, Misha, and Krista, and they're out of it. So, Dex has to have the two. Now, I've got a couple of ones that I can assign to anybody. Now, the problem is at the moment, I don't have anybody in sight. Oh, Zorgi. Okay, so I'll give one to Zorgi. Uh, I've got one fast and one slow. I think I'm going to give... Um, okay, Khan can see that guy. So the fast will be for Khan. I thought he was out to say. And then the slow will be for Hero. Now, the thing is, this guy's not going to be out shoot. Shoot hero. The cover's just too good. Who have we got left? We've got a guy here, a guy here, and a guy there. Let us do let us do Khan first, because if Khan and Kate take out this guy, then Zorgi might be able to shoot this you know, blast around the corner. So Khan is going to take an aimed shot down here. So the guy does have cover from the corner of the building. So it is a six to hit. He doesn't have any combat modifiers, so it's a six to hit, but he's re-rolling ones. <laughs> now the dice, the dice gods knew not to give me a one this time. They knew, so they gave me the next worst thing, because I could have re-rolled a one. Yeah, he misses. So Khan is gone. 
Uh, Zorgi. Zorgi's going to have to take a shot. So he has the shell gun. He can move four inches. So he will move to this corner here. Now it is heavy. It is a heavy weapon, so we'll get a minus one. So shooting there. He's in the open, so it's a five plus to hit normally. Uh, does he have a modifier? No. So in the open, in range, is a five plus to hit. Uh, no modifiers. It's, oh no, he's got a minus one, isn't he? So it'd be a six plus. Six plus to hit. No, they're trolling me. The dice guys are trolling me. Uh, okay, so boom, he misses. Dex. What's Dex going to do? I think Dex is going to run away. Should I just run backwards? That would, yeah, but then he'd be able to get a shot. I could run him over here. But then that guy could get a shot. Ooh, seven. Not enough. So Dex is going to go into the building. Again, I, I could take the roof off of this one, but I can't because there's people on here at the moment. Dex, Dex is inside that building, just basically hiding at the moment. Uh, okay, so now it's the enemy turn. Right, Zorha. Oh God, I can see Zorgi. Uh, this guy can shoot, that's a terrible shot. So, who's, this guy is at the front, doesn't have line of sight, so he'll move at least half speed, always retaining cover. Now, can he get anywhere to get a line of sight? No, he can't. So he's going to move five, six, seven. Uh, Objective has already been taken. So I think he will run to here. Can't do anything else. The next guy will be this guy. Now, he's behind the cover, so he doesn't have line of sight, but he can move and get line of sight. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna move to here, and he'll take a shot at Zorgi. So in range and cover is a six, but they have a plus one to hit, so he needs a five plus to hit Zorgi. Misses, thank you, thank you, thank you. This guy, uh, enemy in sight, yes. Enemy within range, yes. Enemy within 12 inches. No, just out. Um, close to within 12 inches, then move to our flank and get to the arrows. Okay. Um, if they have a clear shot and are in cover, they will remain in place and aim. Okay, so what he's going to do, he's going to go basically where his boss was, into the blood. Sorry, boss! Take the shot at Zorgi. So 6 plus becomes a 5 plus. Miss. Oh God, thank you. Oh, I have to, I, no, I, I shouldn't say anything. I, I shouldn't say anything. The, the gods are going to. The, the gods are taunting me. They're tempting me to say something, and then they're going to go no. All right, that is the enemy phase done. Uh, Zorgi was shot at twice, but not hit. Uh, hero, slow phase. Hero can shoot now. Which one would he shoot? I think he'd probably shoot this guy, more of a threat to him. So definitely with the range, but outside of outside of six inches. So in cover, um, he's so close. You know, normally be like within one inch, whatever, but it's fine. So he needs a six to hit, but he's aiming. Um, he has a combat of plus one. So six plus becomes a five plus. Five plus re-rolling ones. Miss. Uh, typical. All right, end of turn. Now, there were no, no casualties, so no morale check. However, we have to check whether the battle ends. Uh, again, every end of turn. 2d6 for tactical. If any, any of these are a one, they run away. <laughs> oh, the mercenaries run away. They're doing this. They're... So Robin impression. They're yeah, running away, they're buggering off. Right, game over. We hold the field, but at what cost? 
Crichton and Krista are down. We hold the field, we met the objective, and the mercenaries lose their leader and specialist, and then they run away. Phew, these guys were a lot more deadly. I mean, having all of them have a plus one to their combat and having decent weapons, oof, and I really wasn't expecting Crichton to be taken down so easily. Oh dear. Okay, battle is over. Let us go on to the post-battle rolls and see what injuries we get and what loot we get. Hopefully, no more rivals. See you in a minute. Okay, well, I mean, that battle could have gone a lot worse, but um, I'm still not too happy that two, <laughs> two of my guys got taken out. Crichton, Crichton and Krista both got taken out, which um, uh, I'm not going to say anything. Misha suffered when I said something last time, so I'm not going to say anything. Uh, okay, so we... We fulfilled the objective, we secured the center of the board for two consecutive rounds, and then a couple of rounds later the enemy ran away. So luckily for us, because those mercenaries were a little bit a little bit tougher than what we've met before. So now we are doing the post-battle part of the campaign. And as I mentioned before, we are only doing eight of the steps instead of the 14, which are for the full campaign. Uh, I think in the next mission we'll probably do some more. But this is what we're doing today. Get paid, battlefield fines, gather the loot, injuries and recovery, experience and upgrades, purchase items. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I ain't got enough credits to purchase anything. Uh, roll for campaign event. <sighs> roll for character event. <sighs> yeah, I didn't have much luck with those earlier on the last mission. So what we are going to do now is we are going to do those post-battle steps. I have my crew log ready, my crew sheet to make notes. Uh, so that was the mission done. Yep, so let us go to the main rule book, the post battle section, and let's go through the steps. Now, luckily, <laughs> luckily, normally in the full campaign, you have this resolve rival status. If we fight an opponent that's not a rival and held the field, there is a chance that they become rivals. I don't want any more rivals. I've got five already. Um, but again, we're not doing that. We're starting at step four, getting paid. So let us go to the next page. Okay, get paid. You earn D6 credits. Uh, da -da -da -da. Easy mode, no. If we won by completing the objective, retreat any roll of one or two as three. Excellent. So we are rolling d6 and we get three. Have I got three for every single mission? Every time I've rolled to get paid, I've got three credits. All right. So 13. Okay, 13 credits. What's next? Battlefield finds. If you held the field, you've got an opportunity to search. Yes. Uh, cannot acquire weapons from fallen opponents. Yes, I know. Roll D100 on the table below. Okay. We are doing um, yellow first. We get 77. Vital info. Invasion evidence. Turn in this information to get a corporate patron automatically on this world. If the enemy is an invasion th threat... Oh, no, it's not. Okay. You instead find invasion evidence. If so, earn one credit and plus one when checking for invasion on the next step. Okay. So we can get another patron. All right. Sweet. So we get plus one patron. And this is a corporate patron. I've got two patrons already, I think. Let me check. Yeah, oh, I've got three patrons already. I haven't got space on the page. I'll have to write it down here. But I get another corporate patron. Okay, that's not too bad. So that is the battlefield finds. I'm, I find a piece of information that gets me a patron. Nice, nice, nice. I'm not going to say no to that. All right, so then we gather the loot. Gather the loot is step... Don't, don't, don't. No. Seven. Roll once on the loot table to see what you've earned. Okay. Let us put a bookmark here so we know which page we are. We're going to page 131. 131, loot. All right, yellow first. 
We get zero three. A weapon. Roll once on the weapon category, okay? Again, yellow first. Zero three again. What the hell? Uh, slug. Oh, God. Slug weapon. Are the slug weapons any good? Well, it can be. Ooh. Ooh, yes, I want a rattle gun. All right, so let's roll on the slug. I want another zero three. No, I don't. I want a 90 plus. Uh, yellow first. <laughs> we got a 90. No! You get <sighs> 92. A 93 would have given me the rattle gun. Ah, uh, no. All right, 92 is an auto rifle. I think that this is a... I think this one has two shots. <laughs> uh, auto rifle. Well, I mean, I think it's a step up from the military rifle. I think it has two shots. The rattle gun would have given me three shots, but heavy. All right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get too disappointed. I'm not gonna get too angry. That's that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, so that's the loot done. Get rid of the bookmark. We don't need that in the moment. Now, oh, now his injuries. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. Now, one of them was a bot. Bot and Solar's characters use the bot injury table instead. Which is this one. Okay, we'll do, we'll do Krista first. Um, yellow first. So this is for Krista. Oops, hang on. Yellow first. We get 74. 74, minor injuries, no long-term effect, one turn in the sick bay. So, when it says one turn in the sick bay, that means that she will be available for next mission, but she won't be able to do any crew tasks. Okay, okay, okay. So, Krista, it's minor, was it minor injuries? Yeah, minor injuries, one turn, sick bay. Okay, so Krista will be available, but she can't do tasks next turn. Okay, that's better than what happened with Misha. All right, Crichton, our bot. Uh, okay, let's see what we get. Yellow first. We get a 59. A 59 is minor damage, no long-term effect, repair time of one. Uh, is that the same? I mean, is repair time the same as sick bay? Um, um, um. I'll have to check that whether it's the, whether it's literally the same as the sick bay in terms of not being available for, ta for tasks or whether it actually needs a repair roll. Uh, I'll, I'll, again, I'll, I'll double check that. But Crichton, Crichton doesn't have an H, does he? Crichton is minor damage. Oh, my handwriting's terrible at the moment. One repair time. I'm thinking that it's probably just the same as the one time in sick bay. So he will be available for the next mission, but he won't be able to do tasks, which is a bit of a hindrance. Having two, three guys, because Misha as well. You know, three guys that not being able to do um, crew tasks. But it could have been worse. I'm not. I'm not angry with that. <laughs> I'm actually quite happy with that. All right. Uh, so that was the injuries. We got, we got lucky. Experience and character upgrades. All right. Experience. Became a... Okay. Well, bots can't get experience. Uh, Krista gets plus one XP because she became an, uh, a casualty. Survived and won. Okay. So Khan gets plus three. Dex gets plus three. Zorgi gets plus three. Hero gets another plus three, so he gets four. Crichton doesn't get any. Misha didn't take part. Okay. First character to inflict a casualty. Yeah, we've done that already. That was Hero. Uh, campaigns on easy mode. No, no, no. Okay. So, I mean, Khan has enough XP to go up in something. Dex doesn't. Uh, Krista might have, maybe toughness. Hero, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Toughness needs six. Khan has seven. 
So Khan could increase a lot of things. I'm thinking combat skill. Yeah, so Khan is going to get plus one in combat skill. Dex has three, so he can't do anything. Zorgi has three, so he can't do anything. Krista has six. She can increase toughness, so she'll do that. So toughness is now four. Uh, Hero has five. He can increase savvy or speed. No, I'm just gonna. Oh no, three, four, five, six. He's got six. So again, I think I'm going to increase his toughness. Uh, quick to no mission none. Okay, nice, nice. So that's experience done. Purchase items? No, because I need my credits. Uh, next, roll for campaign event. Oh, these didn't go well for me last time. Uh, these really didn't go well for me last time. I got two rivals out of this last time. <laughs> All right. Campaign event. We just roll once for the crew. So yellow first. We get a 57. Didn't I roll that last time? Uh, 57. The crew... The crew has decided it's time for a new person to be in charge. Select a crew member to be the new captain. They immediately receive 3 XP. Roll a d6. On a 1, the old captain leaves the campaign permanently, taking any items carried with them. If your crew has any Kirin, one of them must be selected or they will leave. Oh no, Zorgi. Zorg is making a power struggle. He's making a power take. Oh no! So, doesn't mean he gets the luck point, does it? No, okay. Alright. Okay, Khan stays, but he's not the leader anymore. These are now Zorgi's misfits. <laughs> oh no! So Zorgi gets 3 XP, he's now got 6 XP, and he is the new leader. These are now Zorgi's misfits. Oh no, I'm gonna have to <laughs> I'm gonna have to change all the logos and stuff on the on the videos. <laughs> Zorgi created a power struggle. Zorgi is the new captain of the ship. Oh man. All hail Zorgi. All hail Zorgi. All hail Zorgi. Shit. Oh that could oh dear. Oh crap. Okay. Khan's misfits. No more. Zorgi's misfits. Ooh. All right, now, <laughs> now we're going to do a character event. Select a random non-bot, non-soulless character, even if they're in sick bay. Okay, so Misha can be part of this, but Crichton can't. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. You get a five. One, two, three, f Zorgi. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, it's all happening for Zorgi this turn. Last last mission, it was all Misha. Now it's all Zorgi. Okay, so character event. Oh, God. Okay, character event. What happens to Zorgi? He takes control of the ship. He usurps the leadership and... Yellow, 64. 64. You get hurt while working on the ship. Spend one campaign turn in sick bay, and the ship takes one hull point damage. Yeah, he's probably trying to customize it to his own standards, ripping off all signs of Khan's leadership and slips with a knife or something. And, oh, he cuts wires and crap on the ship. Nice one, Zorgi. Nice one, Zorgi. So, oh man. So Zorgi is injured. One turn. So that's another one that I can't do tasks with. Oh, but he'll be available next mission, but he won't be able to do tasks. Shh, I'm going to have to hardly anybody to do tasks next time. Oh, and the ship takes one point of damage. Oh, meh. I think it gets repaired next turn anyway. Okay, but then... Not good. 
I wonder what the beneficial one. I don't want to, again. I don't want to read the table and find out what they are. Okay, we are done. Mission four is complete. The post battle is complete. Um, <laughs> a kind of mixed bag. I mean, we we actually made a profit this time. We got three credits. <gasps> three credits, of which two are going to be used next turn anyway for ship debt and crew upkeep. So I'll end up with basically a profit of one. Uh, I've got two, three guys who are injured and who won't be able to... No, four guys, because Krista is out. So, Misha, sorry. So, Misha, Crichton, Krista, and Zorgi won't be able to do crew tasks. Only... I've only got three guys for tasks next turn, next mission. That's not good. Uh, the next mission. What is the next mission? Let's have a quick look and see. So the next mission, yes, we have a lot more things to do, including checking for job offers. So does that mean that my rivals could step in? Ooh, I'll have to, I'll have to check when I do the pre-game. But I think step three, determine job offers. I think there is a chance that rivals... I've got three rivals on this bloody planet. There's a pretty high chance that the rivals are going to step in and stop me from doing any profitable missions. Um, in terms of the rivals, yeah, I, I might have, I'm going to have to do some painting. I haven't got all the figures ready for rivals, but never mind. Anyhow, anywho, anywho, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the game. I'm going to try and do these shorter and shorter as time goes on because I think the last mission I had to do into two videos because it was so long. I hope not to do that with this one. Um, but with the pre-game and the post-game, it kind of adds to the duration of the video, so... Bear with me. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Please, please, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't hurt anybody, but it really helps me. Share, uh, share the video as well if you can. Let people know about the game. The game Five Par Six From Home is amazing from Nordic Weasel and produced by Modifius. This game is amazing. Um, I have some plans for some other Nordic Weasel games. Shh. That will be coming at some point. Um, but yeah, looking forward to battle or mission number five coming soon. Thank you very much, guys. Please stay safe. Take care. Cheers.